What if I just film the whole thing like this? Super lounge. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I thought that I would film in front of my books um, because it's been a really long time since I've done that. It's been about a year actually, and this is a far better background that I should continue to improve as time goes on. So this is a pre-fall, end of summer update for you guys. I just, I had a lot of things that I wanted to do for videos and I think that I don't have anything new or interesting to add to those conversations. I was gonna talk about Barbie and I was gonna talk about the new Halloween stuff at um, March for Disney because they dropped it super early. I think that the issue with the internet right now is that it's super oversaturated with opinions. And so if you're not the first person to say something, it it's not that it's not productive, it's that it's repetitive and it becomes an echo chamber of like the same thoughts again and again and again. And I don't think I, I don't necessarily disagree with any of them. I just don't think that I have any new topic to add to that. And Carrie Hill Fletcher just made a video about this and how, you know, you you build your own community and all of that. But I just, I don't know. I don't think that in the time it would take me to write my response, not that it wouldn't be worth it to share. I just think that at this point, there are people who have been very eloquent about their thoughts and what it means. And if you've been paying attention to any of those spheres, um, you've heard it all before, right? You've heard about how Barbie is a great blockbuster win for women and how a lot of people like Ben Shapiro have been like, burn your Barbies, the movie's anti-man. And then the critique is also, but that, you know, it didn't go deep enough into feminism, which in some cases I agree with, in other cases I don't. I think it sits kind of in the middle um, because on the one hand, it doesn't acknowledge the, you know, it doesn't go super deep into the fact that Barbie is a white woman. They make jokes about it and call her white savior Barbie in the movie, um, but they don't go into like how the patriarchy affects black and brown women more than it would ever a white woman. And I think that that's a valid critique from the groups that are vocalizing that. Uh, the anti-man thing is completely wrong because Ken still doesn't apologize to Barbie at the end of the movie, spoilers. And you know, I go back and forth. So I don't think I have full-fledged thoughts. It would kind of be rambly. Um, and again, I don't think I have anything eloquent or different to say that would maybe shift the conversation in a different direction other than I really enjoyed the movie. I do highly recommend it. And I do think that, you know, having a summer blockbuster that is geared towards women is something that's so important, even if it doesn't do enough in certain realms. Um, having it be like the number one movie in America is no small feat. There's give and take with that. I guess that's what my thoughts are. Um, and I guess that I'm not packaging them as like, here's my thesis on Barbie. I just enjoyed it and I do recommend it. So that's how I feel about that. But in terms of the, this is some very deep, like this is what goes into having a YouTube channel and picking a topic to talk about. And then the other thing too is, so on August 7th, it is currently the third, I was planning to go to downtown Disney and take a look at the Halloween merch that was supposed to drop on that day, knowing full well that it would be very crowded, oversaturated and full of resellers. They dropped it early and it happened where it was like, again, I can't get, because I'm a normal person, I just happen to make content. I couldn't get to downtown Disney before then because I have other things that need to be taken care of. By the time I would make that video, the way I initially planned it, I'm still gonna be talking about Halloween decorations that come up, um, but I think we're gonna hold off on it because you don't need three months of Halloween. Two is perfect. Like admittedly, it is still summer. It's, and we don't need to oversaturate. Um, but again, with the oversaturation, like everybody and their fucking brother that went out and was like, this is all of the new merch. Like, let's talk about it. And this is what you can purchase. And then they purchase. And I think I'm gonna take a page out of, uh, I believe the, her name is Nisa Pisa's window shopping series, 
where we go uh, online and I screen record and you know, it'll be much more chill, a lot less. I also don't love vlogging in public outside of like in the park. Like I don't like vlogging in stores because you're in everyone's way. You're in the, you're in the cast member's way. Molly, you're in a guest who doesn't do any of that's way. They're just trying to shop and buy things that they want. Overall, not good. And when I'm home, I can cover Disney, I can cover Michaels, I can cover a bunch of other places because they all post their stuff online and it's much easier that way. Plus when you online shop, you don't feel obligated to buy anything. So I think that that would be a better use of my time to do that than to go out into the world and be in everyone's way making content when people are like, just trying to peruse and shop. I also don't want to add to frenzy. And also there's this thing that how I feel about people complain that Christmas decorations are being out earlier and earlier. Well, the issue is that Halloween comes out right before. And when you put Halloween decorations out in August, they sell out by September. So when it's October, when it's the actual month of Halloween, guess what? It's Christmas because you guys fucking sold it all out and just bought into all of this capitalism that you complain and hate so much. Like it's what it used to be. This is such a rant, I'm, I'm so sorry. But it used to be that like Halloween, liking Halloween was, you know, quirky and different, whatever or, but it wasn't oversaturated and now it's super oversaturated because companies saw how much my generation loved Halloween and were willing to buy Halloween things. So they wanted to make money, not necessarily, it's not so much about celebrating these holidays anymore. It's how much can we get you to spend and buy. Um, and I admit, I love a code orange. I love when Halloween decorations come out, but they don't need to come out August. There, our stores are putting them out in fucking June. They don't need to come out in June. They need to come out late August when it's like right around back to school time, you know, maybe a few things in even then. It's a few things here and there. And the full display doesn't need to go up until September. That is the appropriate time to have full displays out. Definitely not August. You don't need to do the whole switch over. And I understand in the case of Disney and Walt Disney World, Florida specifically, they have Halloween parties starting August 11th. It's a little insane. Can't we all agree? And I know I sit here in my black and orange, but they're my colors. So yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I had all of these ideas and then it was kind of like super oversaturation. And I was like, well, and as I stated before, I don't feel like I had anything groundbreaking to share with you guys. Um, so I decided, hey, let's not do the same content that everyone else is doing. And instead you got me a little bit more chilled out with uh, my matcha lemonade that I'm put near my books. So that's, that's where I'm at. Outside of that, I <laughs> have been so bad at reading. I can't read anything right now. I have been watching so much TV all summer and it's not all good but i can share that with you what i've been watching i watched all of supernatural i watched all of once upon a time i watched the witcher because i was curious about the drama with minimal information on like i don't play video games so i know nothing of that and i haven't read the books because there's a lot of talk of the misogyny that is rampant through it it makes me question about Henry Cavill's decision, decision to leave because he's like, well, they're not sticking to the source material. And I'm like, well, did the ideology change where it's less misogynist, misogynistic? Or did they change things that, you know, don't make sense for a character for like Geralt per se, who's a really well-written character admittedly because he does like kind of, he walks the line of like hyper-masculine tough guy, but he's also like, a very caring father figure, like especially when dealing with Princess Cirilla and anytime that her confidence falters, he's very quick to be like supportive father figure. That was what I found interesting. It was, but like the thing with Yennefer, I'm going so deep into this and I have no background information. So please, I'm just talking about the show. When it comes to her character, her arc at first really gives me the ick because so she has um, deformities that probably give her mobility issues and she is sent off, sold off to this magic school, right? 
where they teach her how to harness her chaos, which is just magic. It's just magic. Um, and, you know, she's gonna be then sent off again to be like the right hand man, the mage, a, a king, ruler, what have you. And again, the storytelling, the way that this is told, it took me so long to figure out. I literally had to sit after each episode and parse out what was being said. I read the subtitles and I was like, what is going on? Anyway, so what happened, but they also go through, before they're sent off to be like right hand man of a ruler, they make the mages more beautiful through this like horrific like ritual where they remove their uterus and they can't have children. Right, right. So it's weird. And so that makes her more powerful because pretty privileged and that I understand, but like halfway through the second or third episode, she then decides she wants to be a mother even though she was willing to sacrifice everything for power and that it villainizes women who don't want to have children but also they keep making her lose her powers for whatever reason and she's continually like known as the most powerful mage so why are we like nerfing her she's already has the character development of understanding what power is because of her because of the lack of pretty privilege she had growing up. So it's not like she needed the character development in that realm. So I just, I myself, and I know many women have a complicated relationship with the concept of motherhood because now it's coming into question. And you know, uh, women are uh, who are childless by choice are often villainized and like not, I don't know just like how could you not have children and you know that's our gender role what have you so um i don't think that it's done in a way that's good i like i don't know it made me think and so for that i kind of have respect for it but at the same time i just don't love the images that were put in front of me they're very graphic um, and they were kind of horrific, especially in that first season. And then as Geralt and Yennefer, who are a couple, you know, they form this found family with Ciri. And I was like, wow, I really like that. But I have complicated emotions about how we got to that point. And now it doesn't matter because Henry Cavill will no longer be the Witcher, um, Geralt of Rivia. And so I'm like, I just, it's too much Netflix drama for me to deal with on top of the fact that, I should have started with this, on top of the fact that we are currently dealing with the WGA strike and the SAG after strike, which by the way, I am in full support of, uh, people deserve to be paid enough to live, period. The things that they are asking for are not ridiculous, especially when you had an old system and then the system completely changed. And now it's like people are making literal pennies off of what would be normal res residuals if we still had regular cable. So anyway, um, I would look into that if you're at all curious, but I do support people being like, hey, we need fair compensation for our time and energy. And I'm like, you are absolutely correct, you do. So whole lot of drama in Hollywood, but I kind of live for it. Not in the sense of like, that's entertainment. It's just that as a film student, let me push up my glasses and be super pretentious. As a film student, I care about what's happening in the industry because it directly affects a lot of the things that I study. So that's where I'm at. This is quite the rant. Well, I have a lot of thesis reading that I have to do and that involves the TV show Bluey because I'm talking about the adult, whenever I say like adult viewers, it makes it sound creepy. I promise it's not creepy, but Bluey, the children's TV show, has through TikTok garnered an older audience. And it's not in the creepy My Little Pony way, but in a like really wholesome, a lot of people find it very healing way. So I'm doing a lot of research on that and children's media, looking at Sesame Street and all of that fun stuff, like the history of it. Um, so I have a lot of reading in that sense to do. So no fun books at the moment, which by the way, this happy place by Emily Henry, I fully DNF'd, uh, which if you're new here stands for did not finish. I did not finish it because I don't like the trope. And I found out that the couple doesn't in fact change and I just didn't like it. And it makes me very sad, but also she announced her new book. And I was like, wow, that sounds just as bad. You like for me, where is, where is it? 
this one, I don't think she she could ever top this, so I'll probably reread this in the meantime for fun. This is Book Lovers. It's like top tier Emily Henry book, this and Beach Read, so I don't know. That makes me sad, but I did have to toss it to the side because I was like, this is not, this is not it for me. So there's that. I was reading House of Cotton and I like it. It's a horror book. Um, it's about this young girl after her grandmother passes away. She is told by this man, this white man that like, hey, you should, you know, come and act as like my client's like missing relatives and they were gonna do her makeup. By the way, the, the guy is the nephew of a woman who runs a, she's a mortician, so it's weird. And just, it's just red flags everywhere and I'm enjoying it. And the way that the author writes traumatic events is very interesting. I don't wanna give away spoilers, but the way that the trauma happens is that the main character goes into almost like a dreamlike state. And so it's written in a way where you don't quite understand what's happening, but then it is, then it's explained after as the like main character is processing it. So it's a, uh, it's kind, sorry, I just got a notification, but it, it's kind of interesting and I'm kind of into it. So I don't know, I'm not, I haven't fully committed to it. Like it hasn't fully sucked me in, but that's my audiobook right now. Oh, I'm also in the middle of Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. And this is her more adult series. Um, it's not Shadow and Bone, which is behind the chair over here, uh, which is the TV show on Netflix that I really liked, but I don't think we're gonna get a season three, so. So I'm in the middle of that. I like that one too, but like I just haven't been like gripped by anything in a really long time. So all of my fate falls to V.E. Schwab when The Fragile Threads of Power comes out in October. Um, I pre-ordered it, but I had to pre-order the UK version because the Amer they changed the American covers and they look like EDM covers and I hate them so much. So I was just like, you know what? I need the black, white, and red ones we're all gonna match and we're all gonna be happy. So yes, um, I think that's it in terms of like books. I think that's just like everything I've done for the summer. Um, and I, like I said in my last video, I didn't film any content when I was with my family at Disneyland this year because I, you know, I just didn't want to. I had all these ideas and when I came down to it, I was like, I kind of just want to enjoy my time with my family because I haven't seen my sister in six months um, or my mother for that matter. Like I, I talked to them like every day, but I really hadn't seen or heard like seen anyone and had like in-person conversations and I didn't want to be like, oh, let me record this. And it's like, eh, I've kind of recorded the same stuff a billion times over. So repetitive does not mean good. So yeah, anyway, that's it for me for today. So if you've stuck around for this long and had me ramble about all things media and just the, and everything that I wanna create as a little end of summer pre-fall update, you can follow me on Instagram. I am there pretty much every single day. And don't forget to click the subscribe button here, leave a comment and tell me what you have been up to and what you are most excited about with fall. And yeah, I will see you guys next week. Bye.